Hi everyone. This short presentation is going to go over using sources and citations in your essays and in your projects. And we're going to be using the rhetorical situation to think about how and why we should use citations. So in this short um, overview, we'll be reviewing plagiarism, what it is um, and why we shouldn't do it. We'll be talking about the rhetorical situation and reviewing those basic concepts. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can build authority with citation and ways to think about source citation um, and avoiding plagiarism as a way to give you credit for the work you've done. So let's start by reviewing plagiarism. At its basic, plagiarism is any time that you use the words, ideas, or writings of others without giving proper credit to the author. This might be lifting a quotation or a paragraph. It might be replicating the structure of an overall text or argument. It might be simply using their ideas without saying where you got those ideas from. The bottom line is that plagiarism is taking credit for work that you did not actually do. And usually when we talk about plagiarism, as we've already talked about this semester, what we're really talking about is what might happen if you get caught? So if you get caught plagiarizing, there's a whole slew of disciplinary actions that might happen. Everything from failing an assignment to failing a class to having something put on your student record that's even transferable to other schools. And that is important to recognize, but I want to take a slightly different approach to how we cite sources and why we cite sources. And I want you to really think about this question. How do you get credit for the hard work you've done if you're not citing your sources? So when we think about a research or writing project, and it doesn't matter if it's in a composition class or a history class or a political science class, anytime you're doing research, you're doing a tremendous amount of work. There's a lot of reading involved, a lot of analysis and really thinking about the topic. And then there's the writing itself, putting all of the information together and synthesizing it as you create your own information. If you're not citing sources, there's really no way for you to get credit for all of that invisible work that doesn't necessarily show up in your final paper. So what I want to talk about is really thinking about why and how we can use citation and use our sources responsibly and appropriately in order to give you the credit for all that hard work you've done. Let's take a second and think about the rhetorical situation. So earlier this semester, we talked about the rhetorical situation as these three parts, the audience, context, and purpose of a message. And by looking at the rhetorical situation, you can see how effective a writer or a speaker is at conveying their their point of view or their argument. So for this class and this assignment, the inquiry project, our context is this is a college writing class um, and this is an assignment about doing research. The audience for this class is the professor and the purpose for the inquiry project is to demonstrate you can find, evaluate, and use sources and especially to show that you've done enough research that you're really ready for the next step and that you can start writing that research paper that you need to finish for the semester. But really any college writing class or any college class that asks you for research has similar audiences, contexts, and purposes. Usually your audience is always going to be the professor. The professor is always an expert in his or her field, which means that they already know probably much more than you will know about the topic and they know what you need to know in order to talk about the topic. The context is always a college course. Academic essays are these really artificial texts that we write because we're writing them for the purpose of displaying mastery. So anytime you're asked to do a research paper or a research report, what's really being asked is for you to prove that you have learned about a topic, thought about a topic, and that you can speak or write about a topic in a new um, and kind of creative way. Citation is what's going to help us do that. 
By using citations throughout your paper, you can claim credit because citations show your reader how much you've read, how many articles you've read, what types of articles they are. And that tells your reader the amount of work you're do you've done. Professors can tell really easily by looking at your works cited page or the citations you use in your text if you have done just like the bare bones work or if you've really dug deep and put a lot of labor and intensive energy into the project. They also show your level of thinking. So we can tell um, whether you're using a reference source, a secondary source, or a peer review source, just how deeply you're thinking and exploring that particular topic. So let's take a look at this. This is just kind of a screenshot of a random research paper that has some of the citations highlighted. And what you should notice here is there are a lot of citations. This is something that's closer to a literature review that is specifically reviewing all of the literature. But what you can see here is the amount of citation shows that this author has not just read, you know, one article and pulled a single quote from it. This particular researcher has read one, two, three, four, five articles about one specific topic. That level of inquiry would be completely invisible if the citations don't appear in the text. So by putting those citations in the text, what you're doing is you're claiming credit. You're saying, look, this isn't just my idea. I'm not talking off the top of my head. You're saying, look, I've read this many sources and all of these experts also agree with me that I'm correct. Citations are part of the argument of your research paper. In terms of your audience, your professors expect students to be novices. No one expects a student to do a research paper and already be an expert. So what we're looking for in those citations is for you to make an argument that you've learned enough to write about the topic. The context is always a school setting for a research paper. And the thing that you want to understand is both your audience and the context really value research and expertise. So using those citations gives a clear signal to your reader that you also value experts and you also value finding information at a deep level. And finally, the purpose um, of really any academic essay or research project is for you to show that you have mastered some concept or some subject to a level that you can write about it. So you can use those sources to support your argument. Without those expert sources and resources cited in your paper, it's impossible for your reader to tell where the information came from and why they should believe you. So don't forget, Citations help you take credit for all of the hard work you've done. And there's a lot of invisible work that goes into the planning, the research, the analyzing, and the writing of a paper. Unfortunately, your professors are not psychic. We don't know what you're doing when you're not in the classroom. So citations are a way to put that work on the page because if it's not on the page, it doesn't count. So hopefully this short overview has given you another way to think about using citations. They really shouldn't be something that you're dreading using. They should be a part of how you approach even presenting the information, right? Citations and expert testimony. Um, these are the ways that we develop our ability and our right to speak in an academic setting. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out by email um, or we could talk more during class.